boys 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 coming back to you with part two in friday's series friday's banter piece oh she looks nice um so earlier today i did my top five uh seducers and lotharios right now i'm gonna do my bottom five losers in love bottom five losers in love guys who i probably will take the piss a little bit but on true truly i actually do feel sorry for them and i honestly think these guys need help to be honest these are famous guys who first of all need to see a psychotherapist and then they probably should join the entourage or something i don't know um so Bottom five, losers in love. Celebrity guys you will know and have heard of that, come on, like, guys, we do need a bit of work. We need a bit of work, guys, come on. <sighs> Hard to watch. Number five, a fellow Brit. And that's about all I have in common with this particular gentleman, Prince Harry, Prince Harry. Yeah, I mean, I think this one pretty much speaks for itself. Like, Rob, you were a literal prince. <laughs> you were a literal prince. And you could have, I don't know what percentage of the world's women would have potentially procreated with you, but it's a fairly significant percentage. He was a decent looking prince. Um, can bestow the title of princess upon the lady of his choosing. Um, you know, had it all going for him. Unlimited wealth, essentially. Unlimited prestige, unlimited fame. And he chose to marry a like 34 year old, divorced American actress, woke actress at that, who everyone in England ended up hating because she's a woke know-it-all idiot. <laughs> and so he's estranged now from his whole family. Um, he's based on this relationship maybe it wasn't out for him maybe he just wanted out of the royal family and if so fair enough but from a from an observer's point of view it kind of just looks like he's in this weird toxic like psychopath kind of bubble he's obviously not that bright and I, I don't think he really knows what's going on can't really see this person kind of narcissistic psychopath that he's with man the guy needs help but is it that surprising what happened weird fucking childhood the guy must have led i mean he um he carried his mom's casket up the road in front of an entire nation when he was like 12 years old hey, that is actual fucking child abuse by any standards very weird that everyone watched on and was like oh this is cool those two boys are carrying their mom's casket their mom who probably just got murdered by their grandmom like fucking weird so yeah I do feel sorry for the guy in, in some respects, to be honest. I know that's a weird thing to say about someone in that position, but I actually do. Guy needs help, man. Definitely needs some freaking help. And he's probably not going to get it because everyone everywhere he ever meets is never going to be normal with him, unfortunately. So, sorry, Harry. Number five on my list here. Number four, Mr. William Gates, Bill Gates. Um... The reason I put him in the list is I saw when he was, um, this might have been when he was married or after he'd been divorced, like these weird little leaked emails that he was sending, you know, girls who worked for him in his company. Um, and it really just sounds like, despite the fact he was the richest man on earth for a, a significant period of time, obviously highly intelligent in some respects, really just sounds like he had a lot of low self-esteem. And those messages just kind of look like, quite desperate and weird and clueless and not like coming from a person with the kind of authority that you'd expect from a guy who's achieved what he's achieved and got to his position so yeah i put him in number four on that list obviously he got divorced as well um lost quite a significant amount of his fortune through that divorce yeah just um i, I do consider him to be a loser in love to be honest with you despite everything he did um, yeah, there's, there's a few other things with Gates as well. Um, 
it's not for me to decide how the guy spends his wealth. I do find it, it's just very derivative, everything he's done. It's like he's inherited a set of values, kind of liberal American do-gooding values. And that's all he's, he's got all this money and all he's done is act in the service of these values. Some of which is obviously quite good, but it's just like, why don't you just go conquer a country, dude? Why, do you, why don't you start throwing your weight around? Like, it's weird to me. Like, that's what Musk has done. Musk has actually, like, he's kind of thrown his weight around a little bit, which is what you should do if you have that money. Try and have more of an impact. You know, shape things, shape the world. Anyway, uh, <laughs> he doesn't need to listen to me, obviously. Um, so yeah, that's number four. Number three, and this is a painful one. This is a painful one for all the men who grew up in my generation, um, admiring this guy so much. He was such a cool actor. He had such a, an amazing a vibrancy to him. Uh, amazing musician, amazing artist, comedian. The, the guy just had it all, man. He had it all. And he had absolute vibes as well. And yet, he's almost become the laughing stock of the world. His name is now synonymous with cockery basically, cockledry and really, literally uh, on every level he's been decimated and that's Mr. William Smith Will is obviously an unlucky name in love Will, <laughs> my friend what happened to you? what the fuck happened man? first his wife's cucking him out then, she's, then they're going on a TV show about it and he's supposed to sit there like it's all all right and normal. Then his wife, uh, after humiliating him, has the piss taken out of her in an, in an Oscar ceremony, and uh, he gets up and then slaps his mate in the head like like he's some kind of you know big uh, I don't know big guy with a pit bull on a chain you know messing like fucking up anyone who who speaks badly of his girlfriend, but. It's like, dude, your wife already cucked you, yeah? She said it multiple times. I mean, it's, it's, it's actually, the stuff she said about him is so disgraceful that it's really, the fact he's still with her, to me, shows us one of two things. Either he's severely psychologically damaged or she's got some really dark stuff on him, which I think is probably both. Um, I, yeah, there's something about it, like, the... You know, I think with all the orgies and shit like that that they do in Hollywood, I bet she's got some real weird shit on him. Some photos of him with a transsexual or something like that. And um, also, he's obviously quite damaged as well from his childhood. I remember reading an interview where he said when he was young, his dad used to batter his mum. And as a young child, he always felt like emasculated that he couldn't defend his mum. It's like, bruv. Any normal psychotherapist or psychologist would would very easily address that within like the first couple of sessions, you know, just like, you know, do you think that was your fault, Will, when you were eight? You know, and I don't know if he's had help for that type of thing. You would think so, but judging by his behavior, you know, and his choice, like the woman he's with, he obviously, he obviously hates. Um, both his children are transsexuals, like, it's weird, dude. It's weird, and it's really sad to see. It's sad for all the people, like, you know, our generation. We, we thought he was the coolest guy ever, really. So, yeah, just sending Will love and healing. And, yeah, I really hope he, you know, finds a better situation in some way for himself. I don't know. You know, the crazy part is, if he sacked her off now, and even if all this bullshit came out, or Will, you know, he was with me and a transsexual, whatever. If all, if she slung all, slung all the dirt in the world, his children disowned him, all of everything, he's only about 51, 52, and he's one of the most famous men on the planet. He's super wealthy. He could, what he could get now is absurd. What he could get for himself now in terms of women is absolutely absurd. Like, he's off the chain. It's completely ridiculous. Like, he could absolutely get an amazing supermodel or like, or like 20 all over the, globally known, right? He could get anything 
and yet he's imagine what he's actually putting up with it's actually deranged it's deranged no amount of money sack all the money off sack the girl off let her sling all the mud let her talk about how you should let her talk all the shit she wants bounce and when you walk down the red carpet the oscars in a few years time like vince cassell you know with something like that on your arm or or three if you want you know yeah. well actions speak louder than words that, that image alone you're like yeah i think will's good you know he really could come back in my opinion i'd fucking love to wing with will smith i would fucking love it <laughs> like cold approach with will smith fucking cold approach manchester will smith let's go let's go imagine that <laughs> I wonder if there's anywhere he's unknown. Go do some cold approach there. Probably almost impossible, you know. But that alone, you know, it just tells you what kind of a level the guy's on. So yeah, number number three there, Will Smith. Painful one. Really painful. All these are quite painful to talk about, to be honest. Um, number two here. What have we got? Number two. I think it was another wealthy guy, you know. Bezos. Jeffrey. Bezos. So he's another one. Um, divorce, divorcee. Wife took a lot of money off him. A lot. You know. <laughs> they're icons, right? They're business icons, these women. Billionaires. And, uh, <laughs> and actually, in fairness to Bezos, the reason I put him in at number two is because he lost so much in the divorce. And it's... It's... It's kind of crazy to me that the richest man in the world, he's actually with, the woman he's with, is a divorced um, single mom of three, like a 45 year old divorcee single mom of three. That's actually insane to me. <laughs> he's the richest man on earth, yeah? Like, he's one of the most powerful, yeah, if he wants to be. And he's with a divorce, so context is important. She's actually all right. She's actually all right. I think she's pretty all right. Um, but he's with a divorced single mom of three. He's the richest man on earth. Just think about that. So Bezos is in there at number two. He's underperforming. But what I will say, I understand why he's with that woman. I understand why. I think what he's got with her is like, a fairly normal level of attraction like if he was like worth three million ran a you know five or six restaurants or something you know just a kind of decent businessman at his age she'd probably be the type of woman that would be attracted to him and wouldn't go for him um and he had like an actual he probably he probably legitimately has someone who actually likes him for him you know uh, obviously, the money's obviously a factor. She's obviously going to fucking love that. But I think in a, in my interpretation of it, in a way which is like she can show off to her mates, look at my guy, as opposed to I want his shit. There's a big difference between those two things. You know, a lot of Latinas are in that look at my guy type thing. They love it. They love being with a guy who's doing well, as opposed to some women, which is like. I want his shit. I want him to buy me shit. It's a different thing. And I think actually he does have good vibes with, with her. It's my observation as an external observer. All of this is pure speculation, but I'm enjoying it. Um, and yeah, but he's on, he's on number two. I think, come on, dude, come on. I'm joining the entourage, brother. So yeah, Bezos is number two. Um, Number one, as someone who definitely needs to see a psychotherapist, possibly needs to be committed to an asylum, is Woody Allen. Yeah, he actually did quite well for himself with Mia Farrow. She was pretty decent. And, you know, he was a talented, um, famous uh, actor and, and producer and writer. So, you know, he's going to do well, despite the fact he's you know, very physically meager in every respect. Um, he still did well. And okay, like in, in that case, you're like you know, you could you could be on the good list, but dude, he uh, he left his wife for his adopted daughter. 
his adopted Asian daughter. Dude, what are you doing? What the fuck? On what planet are you living, brother? I mean, absolutely demented. And, and actually, he, he was almost cancelled in Hollywood before cancellation was a thing because of that. But he still did manage to get a lot of decent films produced, which is, in it, is a feat in of itself, to be honest, because he had a lot of talent. But dude, like, what are you doing, mate? Before you take that step, you're rich, dude. Before you take that step, go to see a psychotherapist, bro. Go to see any, do you not have any friends? who just say to you like, yeah, okay, Woodstock. I can see you like Asian girls. I can see you're maybe at the end of this relationship with your wife. Should we, you know, take a flight maybe? You know, should we go to karaoke night? You know, yeah. Is there no other Asian girl you can date apart from your own adopted daughter? Obviously, if, if it wasn't adopted, he'd be in prison, but there's a weird loophole. But still, it's, it's, it's fucked. I think, you should, I think you should probably be in prison, to be honest, for that. It's so fucked. Uh, <laughs> so that's a bit of a down, downward note to end this video, but yeah. He's probably the only one I don't even, I don't even feel sorry for him. He definitely needs to see a psychotherapist, but I don't feel sorry for him. Um, but I think it's interesting. There's two guys on that video who are, you know, two of them are some of the, the two of the richest men in the world. Uh, one of them is also extraordinarily rich, and he's a prince. So I think what it goes to show is just having a lot of money, just having a lot of status and wealth, that does not mean you're gonna make good decisions in this area. Um, it does not mean you don't need like friends around you to challenge you. You don't need like good examples. You don't need to think clearly about what you want and have good self-esteem. Um, nobody gets a pass, not even the richest guys in the world, uh, as you can see from that list. Not even one of the most famous, amazing, talented uh, celebrities of like the last, you know, 20, 30 years. Even he got stung, you know? Um, you know, but these people go off into that world and there's, there's nothing, you know, there's, I think there's no one in those worlds that can pull them out because everyone is kissing their ass. That's the problem. Um, so yeah, um, on the, can I, I want to end this on a positive. What's a positive? Is there a guy who came back in a positive way? Let me think. Who was getting, who was getting smashed, but he came out in a positive way. He's famous that I can think of. Um, I'll tell you a great example. A guy like Peter Crouch. He's a good example to finish on. He was ridiculed, obviously, when he was younger because of his, he's very, he's like excessively tall. I'm very, very skinny, and uh, unlike countries like the US has got a basketball talk culture, so like excessively tall guys are seen as cool. In, in actually most countries, they're kind of seen as a bit lanky and it's a bit weird to be a, anything over like 6'4 is you're getting into odd territory. He's like 6'7. I uh, always struggled and uh, was essentially ridiculed his entire life, even playing, being an elite football player. Um, and uh, ended up like, yeah, um, becoming an England football player and getting an absolutely incredible wife. Is it Abby Clancy or something? I've just seen him with, I think that's her name. Real super babe, you know? Um, so yeah, that's uh, kudos to Mr. Crouch, man. Like, um, he's got a family with her and stuff. Like, well played, well played, my friend. Absolute legend. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to end on I wanted to end on a positive there, so I thought of Peter Crouch. What an example for us all. Right, Joseph, out.